Life Science's Favorite Stories of 2021. I cover a lot of dinosaur news for Life Science, but by far, I would say the most exciting study was the discovery of a preserved dinosaur butthole. This hole is actually called a cloaca. It is a hole for pooping, peeing, reproduction, egg laying, kind of like a multi-purpose hole, if you will. And it was discovered in a Cetacosaurus dinosaur, which lived during the Cretaceous period. It was about the size of a retriever. It had a bristly tail and it was related to Triceratops. And its cloaca is unique. They've never seen anything like it before. It's incredible that it was preserved. My favorite story of 2021 is about how through a complete genetic fluke, the workers of a single honeybee subspecies, the South African Cape honeybee, gained the ability to clone themselves forever. This not only rendered the bees effectively immortal, it also meant that one worker in particular became a full-on parasite assembling its own perfect clone army to take over the hives of other bee subspecies in the region. This story is fascinating to me on so many levels. It really demonstrates the fine balance between sociality and selfishness in, in, in social insect societies and how that balance can be struck off by a single fluke of genetics. This year, gymnast Simone Biles experienced a case of the twisties while competing at the Olympic Games, which essentially meant that she lost sense of where her body was in the air during a trick. This is a kind of brain-body disconnect that can happen in other types of sports. In other sports, they usually refer to it as the yips. We were wondering if there is a neuroscientific explanation for what's happening in the brain and body when athletes suddenly can't perform the skills that they've trained so many months to perfect. So I spoke with a number of experts on this topic and I got to nerd out about motor learning, which is one of my favorite neuroscience topics. My favorite story of the year is a case study on a 23 year old student in Germany who figured out that he could control his pupils like a muscle. So he could enlarge them when he wanted to and he could shrink them when he wanted to. This was previously thought to be impossible. Researchers did know that some people were able to indirectly control their pupil size, such as by thinking about the sun or calculating a difficult math problem in their, in their minds. But no one thought that anyone could directly control their pupil size just by concentrating on the eye. And the cool thing was, after I published this article, I got so many emails from readers saying that they could do this too. So it was kind of fun to see something that was previously thought to be impossible turn out to be something that was more common than we thought. My favorite story this year was about milkweed butterflies that tear open caterpillars so they can drink their insides. And they do this because the caterpillars are full of chewed up milkweed leaves. In the leaves is this compound that adult butterflies use to attract mates. And what I learned while I was writing about this was that butterflies have claws, which I did not know about, and they use these claws to scratch open the caterpillar's bodies so they can drink the liquid inside. And this behavior is so unusual that the scientists who wrote about it came up with a new term for it, and it's called kleptopharmacophagy, which basically means stealing chemicals in pretty much the most gruesome way possible. My favorite story of 2021 was a mysterious mangrove forest in the heart of the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. Unlike most mangroves, which are found in salt water along tropical coastlines, these mangroves were found in a freshwater system over 200 kilometers from the nearest ocean. Scientists were confused as to how these spindly trees made it so far away from the sea, but it turns out that the mangroves took root around 125,000 years ago when ancient sea levels were much higher than they are today. When the sea levels receded to their current levels, the mangroves adapted to living in freshwater instead. I love this story because it's a rare example of an entire ecosystem evolving all at once. My favorite story of 2021 was written by Tia Ghosh, a park ranger who was just ambling around when he stumbled upon a petrified forest from 10 million years ago. And they found loads of the remains of these giant creatures from a 400 pound salmon ancestor to an exquisitely preserved mastodon skull. They found the remains of horses, tapirs, rhinos, all kinds of beasts that would have roamed this oak forest, which 10 million years ago existed along the sea. And 
what he stumbled upon, you know, became such a huge discovery and such a huge window into this area and this time period um, that is letting geologists and, and paleontologists get a, a closer look at what the ecosystem was like that long ago. And it sounds like a really cool place to have been. I mean, if you were a, a giant rhino or mastodon. I'm Gina Briner, Life Sciences Editor-in-Chief.